It's good to laugh about this because, as you know, in your own field, it's been a tough couple of weeks. No, it, let me tell you something. When Robin passed away... Yeah. I Personal story segment tonight, the apparent suicide of Robin Williams, still a major topic of discussion throughout the USA. As we discussed last night, when a talent like that dies suddenly, it's shocking. Americans remember how much joy Robin Williams provided. Robin was, in a, was sort of like Ali on stage. He, no one was faster, and he was a genius, yeah, okay? True. It was right before we went on here, and you and I were talking, you said, I'm sorry about the loss of your friend, Dennis. And you said, you've never called me Dennis. <laughs> and that, that's the beauty of Robin. I think everybody's so sort of uh, pilty and uh, wiped out at his loss that, uh, you know, uh, he, he was an immense intellect. He was a fearless comedian. And uh, all that was dwarfed by an even bigger heart. I mean, he was the sweetest, gentlest cat that I encountered in my life. You know, he was riddled with depression, as I found out, you know, after the fact. Yeah. And had he only picked up a phone. So if you have depression, yeah. anybody out there, it, don't be ashamed of it, man. Everyone, you know, life is a with intermittent happiness. I mean, I have bouts of happiness. You didn't know that. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if God... Darn it, if Robin would have just called anybody and said, you know, I'm really in a dark place, come over, he might be alive today. And, yep. and there's millions of people that suffer that kind of stuff. But if you go to that dark place, you can't help yourself. you got to call somebody. The only thing I could say is if Robin Williams, who was a locus of joy, can get to that dark place, any of the billions of people on this planet can. And if you're ever in that corner, you have to round the corner off by getting hold of another human being. I'll miss him forever, but he'll be happy that people might not take his route and call somebody to get help. Yeah, call, call somebody. A absolutely. When man. you can see that hole, even if it's at the horizon, call when you can see it at the horizon. That's right, the because there's right. always people that love you more than you love yourself at that moment. And he had a lot. I mean, I would have flown. I would have gotten there in an hour from yep. L.A. But and there would have been a line. Huh? There would have been a line of his friends uh, g trying to get around there. the block. And just people who met him once like me. Absolutely. But uh Now, as promised, a special comment on the death of Osama bin Laden and its immediate impact on this country. Great day for the USA, not so great for Pakistan. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Unlike most such things, the counterterrorism component can be overestimated. There's a lot of misinformation floating around about the operation that killed Osama bin Laden yesterday, so we will set the record straight this evening. By all accounts, bin Laden had largely disconnected from the operational side of al-Qaeda. So he will likely prove more valuable to its terrible cause as a martyred inspiration than he had been as a large and perpetual target. The demise of Osama bin Laden is a major turning point in the war on terror. Al-Qaeda has been downgraded severely at great cost to us, and now its chief villain is gone forever. Desire for revenge within those who ally themselves with that almost diaphanous organization. The maniac had been shot in the face by the SEALs. Their evil inspiration is now dead. Reaction to bin Laden's death has been interesting. Despite the elimination of bin Laden and the prospect that it could animate the Taliban, support for the Afghanistan war here will probably vanish in the weeks and months to come. The Taliban's promising revenge and Hamas has condemned the USA. On the political front, former Pakistani leader General Pervez Musharraf says he's outraged by the raid. And those Pakistani elements who completely failed bin Laden and have a lot more to worry about now, there is not a government in the region who is not happy he's dead. A few countries like Saudi Arabia have applauded the U.S. action. Certainly there will be no groundswell in the Middle East, rising up to avenge the slain supposed leader. Many Americans are frustrated it took so long to get bin Laden, but remember, we didn't get much help from the Muslim world. And that made hunting the terrorists much harder. He was their enemy as much as he was ours. The raid was planned for Saturday, but bad weather pushed it off to Sunday. These kinds of individuals could be set off by anything, anything from bin Laden's death to bad weather. Simply put, the USA is a major problem with Pakistan. It is enabling terrorism and helping the Taliban against NATO forces in Afghanistan. The fact that they ignored a terror group that also sought to overthrow these very same governments was not even a part of the public discussion, there or here. It took four years to track the guy down, but we got him. Barack Obama simply finished what George Bush had started. Talking points would like to know exactly how many calls the president has received from Muslim leaders worldwide.
Barack Obama got Osama bin Laden. So the president did not inform the Pakistani authorities that the raid was taking place. It began with President Clinton. No spin. Good night and good luck. But then you say, well, we got to have mass deportations. That's not going to happen because the 14th Amendment says if you're born here, you're an American and you can't kick Americans out. And the courts would block you at every turn. You must know all that. Bill, I think you're wrong about the 14th Amendment. And frankly, the whole thing with anchor babies and the concept of anchor babies, I don't think you're right about that. I, I think can it's quote going to be it. You want me to quote you the amendment? If you're born here, you're an American. Period. Donald Trump. If you don't know who he is, he's one of those idiots pretending that President Obama has not produced proof of his birth in the United States. Only being outstandingly idiotic, Mr. Trump is doing it as loudly as he can hinging a possible presidential run on this paranoid racist fantasy and lashing out like an 11-year-old at anyone who dares criticize him or even distance themselves from him. Do you envision federal police kicking in the doors in, in barrios around the country, dragging families out and putting them on a bus? Do you envision that? Bill, I, I don't think they have American citizenship. Jerry Seinfeld was to appear at an event staged by Trump's son, Eric benefiting St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Now he's not going. Seinfeld now, quote, feels increasingly uncomfortable with Tr Trump's birther obsession, and quoting again, he feels this kind of demagoguery has no place in public discourse. Trump has now issued a tantrum. I just learned you canceled a show for my son's charity because of the fact that I'm being very aggressive with respect to President Obama, who's doing an absolutely terrible job as our leader. Hispanic Americans are going to turn away from the Republican Party in droves because of you, even if, they, if, even if you don't win. They're going to hate the Republican Party. They say you violated the rules by joining a political organization, and they say you have not been showing up for your contractually obligated appearances as Miss California. So naturally, you got fired. Wait, she, she didn't get fired? Kerry will remain Miss California, very importantly. So after all this, Donald Trump, who never compromised a dollar for the sake of a principle, did not suddenly kick this publicity-generating machine to the curb. Things got personal. I don't like losers. He hit me. Hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? And that's a comment that has caused the uproar. The frequently bankrupt Trump concluded, what I do feel badly about is that I agreed to do and did your failed show, The Marriage Ref, even though I thought it was absolutely terrible. Despite its poor ratings, I didn't cancel on you like you canceled on my son in St. Jude. I only wish I did. You should be ashamed of yourself. So Trump says Seinfeld should be ashamed of himself for doing something, and then also says he wishes he had done the same thing. More aptly, in the statement, Trump compares his birther campaign to a television show with poor ratings. Smartest thing he said in years. When asked about McCain, you got into his war record. That was a mistake because John McCain was a hero. You said he was captured, and I like people who weren't captured. Now, you know that that wasn't correct. Well, he was on a bombing well, mission. I'm he was shot down. He was tortured. He could have been released but said no because he wanted to stay with his captured comrades. Come on, Donald. You know that the way that Bill, came off Bill. wasn't correct. It, Bill, no matter how you say it, what I said, including my remarks. You got 45 seconds. I want you to say something to Senator McCain tonight, man to man, right to him right now. Your idea, apply Social Security payroll tax to all income above $250,000. It's really tough for a person like Hillary Clinton, who's getting $250,000 a pop for a speech. It takes a penny away from the rich instead of $10 away from the poor. Can a candidate run for president of the United States today trying to represent working families? Can you run a decent campaign or must you be dependent no, on billionaires? No, you can, but That's you have to be charismatic. You have to be grassroots um, because well. the folks will donate to somebody um, they believe in. What we need is the president to stand firmly with the working class of this country, be prepared to take on the big money interest. When he does that, He's going to win this election handily. What I'm trying to tell you is, in the Democratic Party, of which you're a member, 
No, you I'm an independent, Bill. Uh, that, yeah, but you caucus with them, all right? I caucus with the Democrats, right. yes. Okay. You got a big problem here. If, you, if you're going to attack the financial system, the bankers and the fat cats, you're using a person who's exploited the financial system and who is a fat cat to do it. That's not going to fly. The number of Democrats who say that the president needs to challenge the Republicans more is it's huge. It's larger than any other subdivision in that poll that we cited earlier. I voted against the Wall Street bailout. I happen to think that the concentration of ownership on Wall Street, where you have six financial institutions having almost $10 trillion in assets, is very dangerous for this country. I think we need to break them up. People who are associated with the Tea Party, of all people, believe that we should not be cutting Medicare and Medicaid. You're asking me how many candidates have the guts to say we got to break up these huge Wall Street firms? That's a good question. No, I don't know anybody them. else who's thinking not, of running. Not, there's nobody, on, there's nobody on the group. What we need is the president to stand firmly with the working class of this country, be prepared to take on the big money interest. When he does that, he's going to win this election handily. You're a naughty boy. You're a naughty boy. What happens if it comes up on the table in the super committee? These guys, the Democrats, have got to be very, very strong and do what the overwhelming majority of the American people want, and that is not to cut Social Security. It's a last resort, but it has to be in play if you are definitely it going to stop that. Our winner, David Duke, the old Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. From New Orleans is David Duke, former state rep there and former Ku Klux Klan member. He sees great opportunity in the election of Michael Steele as chairman of the Republican National Committee. And Duke writes, quote, GOP traitors appoint Obama Jr. as chairman of the Republican Party. I am glad these traitorous leaders of the Republican Party appointed this black racist affirmative action advocate to the head of the Republican Party because this will lead to a huge revolt among the Republican base. As a former Republican official, I can tell you that millions of rank and file Republicans are mad as hell and aren't going to take it anymore. He continues, we will either take the Republican Party back over the next four years or we will say to hell with the Republican Party and we will take 90% of Republicans with us into a new party that will take its current place. Let's make this abomination in the Republican Party the last major party of white redoubt as a rallying cry of resistance. Wow, you're going to take 90% of the Republicans with you, huh? You can fit all 18 of them in your car or you're getting cabs or what? Don't sit there and tell me you, you're, not, not, no, you're, you're, you're not a white. Uh, your, your organization isn't looking out for the white European race. Out, That's look, what you're I'm, looking I'm, out for. I tell you what, I'm looking out for the rights of all Americans. I also believe that European Americans shouldn't be discriminated against. David Duke, who can make even Republicans look good. Today's worst person in the world. But and look, they're unsympathetic to Duke, European Americans. Don't sit here and tell me that you're not trying look, to promote the cause of white people. Because you are. Look, I am absolutely, I love my people, my heritage. I want to preserve my heritage like every people does. Preserve your believe, heritage? What does that mean? How about European heritage? What does you that see, mean? Look, I'll tell you what, you don't know what European heritage is? You don't know what Mozart is and Bach and Beethoven? You don't They're know people. The they come from different countries. Let look, me tell you. The problem with this you. garbage on both sides That's not is that we're all in it together and skin color That's shouldn't right. and matter. You know what? You know what? The people that run the media, they're inflaming the, the African-Americans against European-Americans, and they're inflaming a sector of European-Americans and African-Americans. But the truth is, the real people who are repressing and hurting all of us are the big bankers, which are robbing us blind, yeah, like right. the Goldman well. Sachs of the world. They're putting us in these wars for Israel. That's, that's who's hurting all of America. Mr. Duke, that's I got to go. On. But our winner, Michael Wiener Savage. Last week, he insisted the radical homosexual agenda will not stop until it subjugates the rest of the country. Savage? Isn't he off the air? I heard, I heard he's okay. having trouble. Okay. Uh, well, because okay. he's malicious. You call him crazy and right wing. Oh, but he, malicious. I mean, what, what is, first of all, Michael Savage, you might not like him. He no, has millions of people who follow him. Because That's he's malicious. He he MSNBC hired a guy named Michael Savage. And he came on and did, not only did he do a show, that was basically just spattering invective on people he didn't like, and these people changed from week to week. But it was terribly produced. It was an 
awful show. Very rarely do you get somebody like you who are who was so angry about well, you're an you know you do that anyway. I mean just to get attention. I understand no, that. Oh no. no 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 no. Part of your shtick is to overstate. Look, well, you and I no. talked before. You're it's not wrong, a, you're, you're not you're, a, wrong. you're not a stupid. Bill, person. there are things worthy of thing. anger. Bill, right. Bill, Bill. There but you overstate. Anger. You overstate to get attention, and and that's. A, I. Keith Smith, Home Secretary of the British government, her office has banned from entering England 16 people for fostering extremism or hatred. American radio. Video's single most disturbed individual, Michael Savage. Savage says he'll sue for defamation of character, which is funny because A, he doesn't have any character, and B, he spends 80% of his time insisting this country should be banning people. You go into a schoolroom, wait, you go into a schoolroom, they're teaching kids in the third grade how to put a condom on a cucumber. Yeah. I'd like to talk right. about that. Why do, why do we hear about well, you do. Throw religion you out? You do, and you made a lot of money talking about it. But let me, I want to make one more point. I have. we got about 90 seconds to I'm go. I'm a capitalist, by the way. For God's sakes, Mike, we've just cut to the chase and come out of the closet. Michael Weiner Savage, today's worst person in the world see i don't i don't like it when you say ah. the sodomites i don't i think that's that diminishes you see there are good gays and there are bad gays well there i don't good even want to talk about gay it's gays. the most boring topic no on but the you earth use inflammatory words it's like boring. sodomites Why? i don't care well, let me, 